welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Fight UK 5. And what a fantastic card we have for you here at the Athena in Leicester. All the fighters, all the gyms, all the big teams and the audience are here. This is going to be a phenomenal night of fights with some of the best young fighters in the country. So without further ado, let the action begin. My name is Jack the Crow Hill. I fight out of Coventry Combat Athletics. I like to be aggressive and push, push the action, but it's always good to be smart. <laughs> I always go in with a good game plan. Uh, it's better to have them reacting off your game plan than reacting to them, definitely. I've seen Kyle fight personally twice. Uh, I saw him knock my friend Max Cotton out uh, in spectacular fashion, so I, I know that he's good at stand-up. Um, I saw him lose to Leon out of UTC uh, to an armbar, so you know maybe his ground game's not quite as good as his uh, stand-up. I think I'm going to take him down and submit him. OK, ladies and gentlemen, introducing your first challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Coventry. He's 24 years old, stands six feet tall, and weighed in at 77 kilos. He fights out of Coventry Combat Athletics and has a mixed martial arts record of seven contests, three wins, and four losses. Let's hear it for Jack the Crow Hill. And his opponent, the challenger, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Nottingham. He's 22 years old, stands six feet tall, and weighed in at 77 kilos. He fights out of the rough house, and has a mixed martial arts record of seven contests, four wins, and two losses. Let's hear it for Carl. This welterweight title fight is fought over three three-minute rounds. Okay, Jen, center of the cage. Okay, you both know the rules, you both know what I expect, okay? Amateur rules, no elbow strikes, no heel hooks, no neck cranks. Protect yourselves at all times and obey me at all times. If I ask you to break, I expect a good clean break. Any questions? Any questions? Touch gloves, back to your corners. So the welterweight title, the amateur welterweight title on the line here. As Jack Hill in the black and yellow meets up with Carl Bomber Booth in the red and black shorts. Okay, first round. A lot of Ready people not really predicting this one to go. The on. distance, both fighters been in there, shown knockout power. Booth, you remember from his last fight, showed an unbelievable set of striking skills and one with a big head kick. Big right hand from Booth after a little flurry of shots from Hill and a big high head kick. That's what we've seen before. Got Hill thinking. Hill shoots, looks for the takedown. Very wise. Booth, beautiful work, knee to the body, and it seems like he's over. Big, and that is all he's over. Out. That is all she wrote. Hill was asleep within minutes. Beautiful work and a great way to win a title here at Fight UK for Carl Booth. OK, ladies and gentlemen, after just 27 seconds of the very first round, your winner due to referee stoppage from ground and pound and new Fight UK amateur welterweight champion of Great Britain, from the red corner, Carl Bama Boom. So, a contender for knockout of the night, surely Carl Booth making short work of his opponent and taking him the title. I mean, obviously you're confident in your stand-up. I mean, did you think you could finish it that quickly? Um, I didn't expect to finish it that quickly. I was hoping for anything, anything was gonna like, anything, anything me, to be honest. Um, any way I could have won, I would have tried it, so just glad that it happened that way. So and definitely, and now taking home the Fight UK title, I mean, what does this belt, belt mean to you in terms of how much time you put in and your training and, and everything that you put towards this is, it? This is, um, this is for my like team, everyone who's helped me train. I've done really hard training recently, carried on training since the last fight, so like 100% now anyway, so this is, this is what 100% feels like. 
So here we go, Ben. It's time for the professionals to get it on here at Fight UK. And what a fantastic fight we've got coming up. Definitely, we've got Dan Watkins and Matt Hallam, two guys with heavy, heavy hands who love to go in there and throw bombs. Nobody thinks this one's going to go to the judges, and there's only one way to find out. My name's uh, Daniel Watkins. I fight for John Skillen's Martial Arts and Fitness. Started off doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've been doing that for three years. I just enjoy doing it. Win, lose, draw, doesn't bother me. I just enjoy, enjoy the sport. I'm Matthew Hallam, fight out of Team Wallhead um, in Loughborough. Um, I've been doing uh, contact sports since the age of 12. Uh, I'm 30, 33 now. Technically, uh, on the ground, I'm, I'm okay, but uh, I just like to change my fight style depending on the fight that I've got. I know that my opponent, uh, he comes out fighting quick. His last fight lasted 10 seconds, so he's going to come out quick, so I've just adapted my fight style to, to that. I'm not going to disrespect the guy. I don't really know him 100%, but I don't really see him as being a problem. Never underestimate your opponent. Personally, I'm a striker, so so I'm going to keep him stood up, more or less so I'm going to pan it out for the fight as well. You know, he's only used to fighting at amateur, so he's not really had much ring experience with a 10 second fight. You know, I don't want my fans to come down here and not, not have a fight, because the last one took 10, 10 seconds, it was like done clean. My ideal prediction would be middle of the first round, gone. That's it, I'm out of here after party, boom. I'm going to knock him out. That's what I'm aiming for, I'm going to knock him out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man, he hails from Quorn. He's 29 years old, stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, and weighed in at 81.6 kilos. He fights out of John Skillen MMA, and has a mixed martial arts record of four contests, one win and three losses. Let's hear it for Dan... A warrior, a Watkins. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Lincolnshire. He's 33 years old, stands six feet three inches tall, and weighed in at 84 kilos. He fights out of Team Wallet. And tonight is his debut in the cage. Let's hear it. For Matt uh, Hello. This middleweight contest is fought over three five minute rounds. Okay, gentlemen, you both understand the rules that you're fighting under. You both understand about the 12 to 6 elbow, yes? Mm -hmm. Just nod your head, yeah? Cool. Do you have any questions about the rules? Okay, protect yourself at all times, obey my commands. Touch them up, back you go, best luck to both of you. So here we go at Fight UK. Dan Watkins versus Matt Hallam, and man, that was a stare down, Ben. Very intense stare down for the first professional bout of the evening. Dan Watkins, grey shorts, one and three record. Let's go back. Matt Hallam with the Union you Jack ready? shorts. This is a professional debut, but he has fought Amateur. I saw him at the last fight, UK Amateur Championships winner. Fantastic fight with some good uh, good ground and pound. Good Just use of his good strength. kicks. And Hallam a real powerhouse at this weight, Rob, and a very physically imposing presence. Well, it was good use from range, the way he used his legs, chopping up and down. He's got Watkins thinking about what? those feet constantly. He's got Watkins backing up, and there's a nice kick. Watkins is really struggling to deal with this power. And there's some nice knees to the body. Beautiful control from Hallam. He's got the plum clinch. Beautiful knee to the head. Watkins doing well to survive this onslaught of strikes at the moment. <laughs> Hallam circles, takes the back. Spools well across the, the back, back looking head. for the space Watch to the fire the shot. Head. Warned by the referee to be careful at the back of the head. So often we see it, Rob, a very difficult position to, to throw strikes without hitting the back of the head. You see Watkins working for the takedown if he can get it, but Matt Hallam, a huge physical imp imposing presence, cuts weight to get down a down a 85, and he's a really big, heavy-handed striker. Some nice knees to the body. Oh, the back of the head. Watkins really struggling here. These knees to the body okay, are coming enough, thick enough, and fast. Enough, enough, enough. And that's it. The jackhammer in ground and pound from Matt Hallam was all she wrote. 
What an unreal Let's finish. Very riders. rare. Come on. You see fights finish from that position, Rob, but Hallam just landed some powerful, powerful bombs. Due to referee stoppage from ground and pound, from the red corner, Matt Hallam. Ben Carlidge here at Fire UK 5 with Matt Hallam. A fantastic victory to open us off here. And it looked like for me, he just couldn't deal with the power of that ground and pound. Yeah, well, what, what I've done is I've come from light heavyweight down into a middleweight section. Bearing, you know, bearing in mind, I'm, I'm taking that strength from being a light heavyweight last time into the middleweight division. And I'm hoping that that's going to be the result to many other fights. It just, every punch felt like it hurt, hurt him. Definitely, I mean, so you were confident then that you could finish the fight in the nature that you did? Yeah, yeah, I felt far too strong for him. And, uh, you know, fair play to him, he got in. He's got a big heart that that has, so, so now respect to him. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, in Leicester at Fight UK, one of the hottest tickets in the country. And Ben, it's professional action all the way. Dan Munro, Josh Foster, two phenomenal flyweight fighters. Both coming in with power, both coming in with precision. This one could go either way. Yeah, my name is Dan Munro. I'm 32 years of age. I'm from Basel in Essex. I review the strengths and weaknesses between myself and my opponent, develop my game plan and stick to it. My name's Josh Foster and I'm fighting out Team Total Dojo. It's not a game of chess to these guys. They just come out and it's just a fight. <laughs> they, they just come out and swarm me. They, get, they pay for it. They get tired in the end. I think to just get in, into the cage nowadays in 2011 and just run off with emotion, that's a recipe for disaster. To not get in there and have a game plan to stick to, that's a potentially dangerous. I'm a technical fighter, you know, I'm not a massive, big, strong guy. I'm just a, I'm a technical fighter with good cardio. I've heard he's a good striker, but I've made, I've made that mistake before of assuming someone's going to be good at something and then they've just completely shocked me when they've been in there. I've heard that he's very well-rounded. I've heard that he's a very competent grappler and striker. Uh, I know he comes from a very good gym, very good coach. Uh, I haven't got a bad word to say about him. I mean, we, he and I actually spent 40 minutes cutting weight with each other yesterday in the sauna, so. Uh, oh, well, I'd like to, <laughs> to obviously win first and foremost. Um, I just want to do a good performance. You know, you can never say where, where you're going to win the fight, how you're going to win the fight. It's such an unpredictable sport. You know, I just, I just want to win and look good. Um, the fight will either be stopped because of the accumulation of damage I inflict upon him or because I render him unconscious. That'll be it. That's my prediction. <laughs> yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Basildon. He's 32 years old, stands 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighed in at 56 kilos. He's an independent fighter with a mixed martial arts record of three contests, two wins and one loss. Let's hear it for Dan and No Jits And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Milton Keynes. He's 20 years old. Stands 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighed in at 57 kilos. He fights out of total dojo. And tonight is his debut in the cage. Let's hear it for Josh of Foster. This flyweight contest is fought over three five minute rounds. Okay, fire, center of the cage. Gents, you both know the rules, you both know what I expect. Protect yourselves at all times and obey my instruction at all times. If I ask you to break, I expect a good clean break. Any questions here? No, Any questions here? Fight hard, fight fair, fight clean. Touch gloves, back to your corners. So here we go, Ben. Flyaway action here at Fight UK 5, here at the Athena in Leicester. And what a fantastic atmosphere it is. What a great venue. Definitely, the crowd really getting into these fights. The second one on the professional cards is Dan Munro. In the yeah, camouflage shorts fight. against Josh Foster in the blue and white shorts. Foster coming out of the total dojo, so we know a lot of very good training partners for him to work with down there. Monroe just tentatively moving, staying on his toes. 
Foster looking a slightly taller fighter for me, Rob. Looking at picture, picture perfectly. Come in on that with an angle on that jab and one, two, or three, and then maybe double it up. Monroe looking to land the hooks if he can. Monroe with some very good movement. And both fighters, Rob, showing good footwork, good head movement. Coming in, throwing a selection of shots. There's a takedown coming in from Foster. For me, though, uh, I was going to say Monroe forcing Foster to be the busier on the outside. Very calm. Does a great job of defending that takedown attempt there. Definitely. Nice kick from Foster there. Nothing really. I know Monroe did well at the hands up. There's a nice hook to the right hand. Some nice. Hands being thrown, some good lever. Real good display of footwork and head movement for this, me, Rob. Very good technically for both fighters, throwing a lot of feints out there, making their opponent miss. Good combination again, good accuracy from Monroe. I like Monroe's throwing those hooks, but he's not throwing just one or two, he's doubling them up with combinations and he's coming in over the top, which is how he'll catch his opponent. Beautiful hook, follows with a left there. Foster really put on his back foot here, unable to break through the defence of Monroe. For the smaller fighter that Monroe is, the, the less tall fighter, the less for reach. I mean, it's Foster who really, for me, Rob, is, is having a lot of trouble with the, the riddle of the range, so to speak. That's right, whereas Monroe seems to be comfortable. He knows his, his own spacing. Foster with a good shot of his own there, straight down the pipe. And again from Foster, trying to lure his man in. There's some big shots coming over the top from Munro. Munro obviously a southpaw, so difficult to kind of find sparring partners, difficult to deal with, obviously, Ross, the old southpaw curse to talk about doing everything in reverse. A lot of fighters struggle to kind of adjust to uh, to fight in a good southpaw. Yeah, I, I spar with oh, a very good... A big right. As I said, that it was a huge shot from Foster, and Foster looks to finish this fight. That's some big Beautiful, big strikes, but Leon Roberts looking in close, allowing the action to continue. Monroe did really well not to get finished there, Rob, but now it looks like Foster on the top, he's got the mount position. Looks like a cut above the eye there from one of those elbows. Foster in mount, and he's got the legs great bind, and now he'll be looking to posture up and land some strikes. And obviously under the professional rules, Rob, elbows that we've seen could play a very, very, very big part in this. Foster looks to peel the arm away to open up his opponent. Take and fire those short, vicious elbows. Monroe in trouble. The arm goes up straight. Foster takes it. And that's the arm bar submission straight Beautiful away. Beautiful work. Great win for Foster. And Ben, I was just about to say, I, I spar with a, a southpaw that's a very, very good striker. Very difficult to oh, get around, but they do have holes have in their game. Winner. And Foster well, proved it the there, winning beautifully. OK, ladies and gentlemen, after three minutes and 23 seconds of the very first round, your winner, due to a tap out by an armbar from the red corner, George Foster. So, fight fans, if you're just joining us, You've missed an incredible night of action so far. And Ben, it's about to get a lot more explosive. Definitely with Pavel Zivovka, we've got an amazing striker. But coming up against a real hungry young buck in Leon Edwards. This really is age, experience versus youth and enthusiasm. This is anybody's fight. OK, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Poland. He's 28 years old, stands 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighed in at 80 kilos exactly. He fights out of frontline MMA and tonight is his debut in the cage. Let's hear it for Pavel Zivifufka. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Birmingham. He's 20 years old, stands six feet tall, and weighed in at 80 kilos. He fights out of UTC and has a mixed martial arts record of one contest with one win. Let's hear it for Leon 
Rocky Edwards. This catchweight contest is fought over three five minute rounds. Okay, fire, center of the cage. Okay, you both know the rules, you both know what I expect. Protect yourselves at all times, obey me at all times. If I ask you to break, I expect a good, clean break. Any questions? Any questions? Fight hard, fight fair, fight clean. Touch gloves. Back to your corners. Wow. So there you go. Not even willing to touch gloves as we go to the start of this one. A main event of the evening here. A very, very relaxed looking Leon Edwards. Okay, first round. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Bring it on. Come on. So here we go. Pavel versus Leon. Beautiful high kick to open things up. Yeah, Leon Edwards out of the UTC gym, a, a fighter a lot of people are talking about, a great dynamic kind of range of punches and kicks. And obviously we see in his corner there, as we've seen all evening with the UTC fighters, the UFC's own Vaughan Lee, so I mean a great level of experience at, at that gym. And Leon Edwards, yet another one of these really talented youngsters coming out of that gym. Again, good fast feet from Edwards, but not finding its target. Pavel on the outside, just looking to pick if he can, and Leon Edwards, hands down by the waist, the Anderson Silva style front, front kick. Edwards looks like it comes up, smashing in over the top. Edwards looking really for, for something spectacular, but Pavel there showed him that he's all business, that you can throw those fancy kicks and punches, but I'll be waiting on the other end with a big right hand, and that's what he did. Oh, and there's a huge left. Oh, and there's another one. Edwards pouring it on. He takes the man of the canvas and lands a flurry of strikes. Pavel really struggling here. Leon Edwards went for a huge knee. That, that big it just took himself off his feet there. And Pavel comes forward again. Now the tide's turning in this one. Edwards having to cover up. Looks for the tie clinch. Can't quite get it. Pavel with some good combinations here. Up and down. He fired a very good right hand to the body. Might have given Edwards something to think about. What an exchange that was there, Rob. Fast and furious from both guys, back and forward. Tides turning. I think that word there is the key word in this fight, composure. Both fighters need to stay composed when they've got their opponent under pressure. Edwards there, another kick as he comes forward Southpaw stands looking to land that big left straight down the middle you can hear Pavel's corner calling at him to keep the hands up high Edwards just stalking his man Pavel looks for the Superman shot doesn't quite find a target for it both guys circling the cage now closing the distance of each movement. I think what we're finding now, Rob, is that both guys have got a newfound respect for each other, knowing that they both hit the other one with some good strikes and not being able to put him away. I mean, Edwards landed that huge left that had Pavel in a lot of trouble, but he was able to come through it and land some punches and back Edwards up. There's another jumping kick there from Edwards. Very unorthodox kicks from Edwards from some very uncomfortable angles. Huge bomb from Edwards. Good shot from Pavel down the middle. This fight almost turning into a, a kickboxing or K1 fight. Definitely, it's all striking here so far, Rob. Neither man thinking takedown. Edwards, there's a huge, there's that big left. And here come the punches. Pavel really struggling to compose himself as Edwards lands these massive punches. And there's a good elbow from the top. Vicious elbow. Could hear the sound of that connecting from our position, cage side. Big, powerful elbow. And again, Pavel just looking to keep his opponent in close, not giving him the room to fire those vicious strikes. Pavel's got to do, Rob, really, is grab a hold of his opponent and look to kind of compose himself. He took a big shot there, that huge sweeping left hook. You see the crowd 
chanting UTC, obviously, in support of Edwards, really getting into this fight. What a first round it's been. Leon Roberts looking in. If he doesn't see any movement, he will pull them both back up. Edwards walking his man Leon's to the stand cage. Up. Stand you up. Nice. Good chopping elbow again from Edwards. Now Edwards, what he's done is he's freed his arms a little bit. So what Pav's going to do is come in and look to lock those arms, and we can hear his we can hear his corner screaming, close guard. And that's a very good strategy, realistically, to kind of limit the offense of Edwards to tie this one up. Last 10 seconds of what has been a pretty breathless five minutes with the sign of a good round when you really don't remember where all of it went and how fast it went. Pavel landed some strikes from the bottom. What a first round between Leon Edwards and Pavel Zoivka there. But let's not take anything away from the toughness that Pavel's shown in that round. Soaked some big shots up and came forward through it. Second round, you ready to fight? You ready to fight? Bring That's on, right, some on. very good, well-aimed shots. There's a nice low kick from Edwards to start this round off. We see straight away, have a lift that leg up, he really didn't like that low kick with some good venom definitely and he backs up an elbow over the top from Edwards very inventive striking for me Rob gets his mouth with a great takedown take heavy takedown it's an impressive performance from Leon Edwards for me Rob showing a lot of different tools in his toolkit really showing the good boxing showing the kicks but also as we see there showing the wrestling and now we're looking at a heavy heavy top game Tried to climb his way to mount position, caught in the half butterfly by Pav on his way over the top. Pav in a good position for the sweep, should it arise. Pav again, just happy to tie his opponent up, keeping him still. I mean, that's been the story of Pavel's game from the bottom, realistically. He hasn't shown really an attacking guard, but what he's done really well is he's locked his opponent up and hasn't allowed him a lot of space to work but as I say that Edwards moves to mount and here come the punches he rolls over and Edwards has got one hook in and now he'll be looking for the submission if he can get it he's got both hooks in now as he rolls his man through tough times for Pavel here wrist only wrist only Pavel won there for holding the glove of Edwards very well to get out of that position for me Rob Back control, he managed to turn into his man and get up. And now he's pushing Edwards up against the cage. Get off his shorts, get off his shorts. Well, we've seen it before, Ben, where fighters are happy to give up their back, knowing that they can escape from their back easier than they can from mount. And obviously under these professional rules, I mean, the mount situation, a very, very, very dangerous place to be in. Big shots can kind of come in from there and from the back, I suppose, there's less kind of strikes that you can really be hurt with. Obviously, you can't be caught with any elbows from that position. Pavel still coming forward. He's got the danger in those punches. That's right, working as the aggressor now. Looking to stalk his man and fire some shots from awkward angles. Edwards looking on closely. Just out of range for that kick there. Another Superman there from Pavel. Really likes that technique. It's Leon kind of backing out, wringing the arms out a little bit, Rob. And when we talked about it, I mean, a real dynamic energy sap in first round, and it's inevitable that the pace would kind of slow down here in the second. a beautiful high kick that catches Pavel and had him almost out on his feet but That's he was able to survive he doesn't want to know off that knee Robin here's the ground and pound Leon Edwards taking a very close look at it that left hand firing like a piston after a kick that almost put him away on his feet how is Pavel still in there We're trying to, almost we saw Pavel there trying to get the mouthpiece out of his mouth just to get extra extra kind of a 
energy, extra breath to him. I think that knee to the sternum really took a lot out of him. We saw him wince in pain and fall back to the canvas. And there's another knee coming through to the body. Leon Edwards now to the head. looking for the choke, but he can't really get his man from there. But what a hard shown from Pavel, Rob. He's taking some huge shots, and Edwards now looking to lock in a choke if he can from that position. Dash maybe. Let's it go as he looks to come forward. Edwards moves to side mount position. We can see what he's looking for, Rob. That left elbow, that cutting left elbow, if he can land it over the top. He's got Pavel pushed up against the corner there. Really looking to grind his foe out. As mate, you asked the question, how is Pavel still in there? He's done fantastically well to survive a vicious onslaught that started with a head kick. Last ten. Last ten seconds again. Another really entertaining round. Leon Edwards landing some huge shots, coming very close to finishing his opponent. Fantastic second round. I mean. This really is a great fight. Both guys well matched up. Pavel just looked to our corner yeah. there and gave just us a wink careful. and a no, smile. No, shoulder, yeah? just be careful as if me. to say that he's still fine. So it's going to be a very interesting third well, listen, round. Listen to me, yeah? Very much so. Punching, make sure your fist stays like this. Don't put your fingers. Make sure your fist stays, yeah? Referee Leon Roberts just having a quick word in between rounds to different fighters warning about techniques. Right. Bring it on. Come on. So third and final round. Who wants it bad enough? My very well come down to survival of the fittest in this round. Condition as we see so often in these fights, Rob factoring in. Have a looking a little more tired of the two. Hands a little lower, mouth a little wider open. Edwards looks like he's just picking his spot for me, Rob. He's just circling forward, and there it is. Timing. Very good timing from Edwards. It's from the tail of the left hook, really, from Leon Edwards. And there's a huge kick over the top. Pavel showing that even in this round, he's still got that explosive power. Oh, and there's another kick. Beautiful shot. Pavel almost faking that punch then. Much closer around this one, Rob, for me. A very uh, tough one from the judges. Neither man really landing. A lot of feints going, a lot of combinations just kind of missing. You just kind of sense that all it's going to take is one shot from either, either fighter at this point. For me, Pavel needs to be very, very careful as he does move in aggressively. Edwards just seems to be biding his time, clocking the timing almost of his opponent, trying to study him and work him out, break him down. And there's that big left again. And his go-to punch really as Pavel comes forward. And there's another kick. Pavel coming forward very aggressively. Seems to realize how close this fight is and lands a nice crisp hoop there. Coming forward and Edwards straight down to a takedown, and what a quick takedown that was. Felt the momentum shifting, felt his opponent kind of coming forward and made the, boat, the best of that momentum by going underneath and getting that takedown. That did surprise me, I have to be honest. I thought Edwards would have been the fighter that would be happy to stay upright, to duck underneath and shoot. He's probably looking at the win through the decision. Judges looking on, they'll score a good takedown for him. And he's perhaps proven that he's going to be a very, very tough cookie to put away. Definitely. I mean, I think from, from Edwards' point of view, I mean, I think he felt that Pavel was getting comfortable in that round and was coming forward. And maybe the, the stand-up exchanges weren't going as he'd, as he'd want to. And from that point of view, it makes perfect sense. I mean, why take the risk if your opponent's coming in and aggressive like that? And you can feel a, a takedown there, then by all means. And from Edwards, it's especially clever because he hasn't really gone for a lot of takedowns. So to throw one in at this late stage when his opponent's coming forward, she's a very wise, a very wise head on this young fighter's shoulders. 
Try fighting the smart fight. Sometimes, as a fighter, you have to look at your options. Do you go for a, a crowd-pleasing victory? Or do you fight the smart, fight, smart, the smart fight to have your hand raised? Well, definitely. I mean, and let's be honest, Rob, Pavel's shown that he is tough as nails with those shots that he's taken, the big kicks, the knees, the left hands. He's taken all those shots and he's carried on coming forward. That's um, right, throwing some fantastic combinations and bombs of his own. Definitely. I mean, Leon Edwards known as a guy with good punches and known as a guy who can hurt people with strikes. I mean, maybe this is the first guy he's fought who can kind of take his punishment and keep coming forward. And that obviously a big, a big psychological test we see for a lot of fighters when you first meet that guy, that guy who takes your best shots and comes straight after, straight forward. There's another kick coming in from Edwards, firing that well. But Pavel looks hungry at the end of this third round, finishing the stronger of the two, winging that big overhand right. Another nice kick from Edwards' kicks for me, Rob, remarkably fluid. That's right. And it's always great to see an MMA fighter that has that crispness to their feet and their hands. Just a nice Pavel coming forward now, landing some strikes. This is the kind of fight that Edwards doesn't want to get lulled into. Edwards does not want to get pulled into one of these really wild brawls because that's when his opponent's dangerous. But with 10 seconds left, if he can finish the fight with, a, with another takedown, maybe it'll put the stamp on it. Pavel wanting to get into that aggressive brawl at the end there. But as you said, Edwards put the smart fight. OK, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of hard-fought action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges have rendered a unanimous decision, scoring the contest 30-27, 29-28 and 30-26 in favour of your winner. From the red corner, Leon Rocky Edwards. Ben Carlidge here at Fight UK 5 with the victorious Leon Edwards. A very tough fight, Leon. You landed some big shots. I mean, were you surprised you couldn't put him away? No, man. You hit it hard. Got a hard head. But good win. So. I mean, were you, were you happy with that level of performance you put out there? I mean, you looked in good shape for... But what was a very fast paced fight, your yeah, cardio yeah. seemed to hold up. Yeah, it was all right. I was meant for a 77 kg, but I had to fight a catch weight, a bit bigger than me, but didn't feel that much stronger than me. So, it's a good fight, enjoyed it, enjoyed it. <laughs> but I'm Rob Nutley. I'm Ben Cartledge. This is Fight UK, and you're about to watch the main event. And Ben, what a main event we have for. Martin Sheridan, Dean Truman, two of the best prospects in the country at the moment. Nobody knows what's going to happen because these guys are so well matched up. This one is going to be fight of the night. Yeah, I'm Dean Truman, uh, fighting out of Team Bushido and Team Warlord. Two fights on Fight UK. Yeah, I won both of them. Uh, one fight was at Semi Pro. Uh, my name's Martin Sheridan, uh, fighting out of Sudan MMA. Uh, records 2 0 0. Training's not a sacrifice for me. The only sacrifice is time away from family when I'm training six days a week, you know what I mean? I, I love training. I, I'm not one of these people who moans about it. I love going training. I've seen on the internet as a kickboxer, but he's, he's won both his fights by submission, so he's obviously got a decent all-round game. But don't worry me. Not really got a game plan. I just go in there, test the waters and listen to my corner. Got experienced corner men, so just listen to what they tell me. And hopefully it works. <laughs> I'm not aggressive. Well, I'm not. I'm not overly aggressive, I should say. I, I much, much prefer to have a cool head, think things through, rather than just steam in and just. I always think people who do that tend to either be killed or get killed. So I don't know. The feeling that you get is just. It's good when you beat someone. It's good. You know you're better than them. You've you've trained hard for it. It's, you've achieved something. It's just a real good feeling. You can't really explain it. Aggressive. Definitely aggressive. Uh, not too clever in the sense, so just go out there and be aggressive. Ground and pound, TKO. Got good wrestling, so that's what I'm planning on doing. So I've got a game plan, haven't I? <laughs> Prediction, first round win, either. 
either knockout, submission, doctor stoppage, TKO, anyway. First round then, always. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the main event fighters properly. Fighting out of the blue corner, he hails from Wellingborough. He's 28 years old, stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, and weighed in at 65 kilos. He fights out of Sudan MMA and has a mixed martial arts record of two contests with two wins. Let's hear it for Martin the Silence of Sheridan. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Derby. He's 22 years old. Stands 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighed in at 66 kilos. He fights out of Bushido and Team Wallet and has a mixed martial arts record of one contest with one win. Let's hear it for Dean Taruma. This featherweight contest is fought over three five-minute rounds. You both understand the rules that you're putting in there. Do you have any questions about those rules? Okay, listen up. I want you to check yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. Put your up, back you go. So here we go, Fight UK. I'm Rob Nutley. With me, Ben the Pen Cartledge. And you're about to witness the main event of the evening. The featherweight war between Martin Sheridan in the red shorts, Dean Truman in the Union Jack shorts. Both these fighters undefeated. Neither all won that blemish on the record. Two explosive featherweights. And there's a huge shot coming through from Truman. Punches look very, very tight as he looks to take his man of the canvas. Good balance from Sheridan there, not getting taken down. Very good balance. Both guys looking for the plum clinch and knees. Almost mirroring each other in manoeuvre. As it goes to the canvas, the Truman looking to just land a guillotine there, doesn't quite get it, but fires a knee as a backup. Sheridan basing out well, cage side. Truman driving. This is a furious pace from Truman, Rob, you can tell. He might have been moving a lot, but you can tell by his, his posture, by, his, by the way that his muscles are tensing, he is really pushing his opponent hard up against that cage. He wants to take him down and take him out. Looks to isolate that single leg. And then Beautiful. Trans transfers to the double fantastically. Looks to work his way round north south position. Ops for side mount instead. Brings that knee up in high. Keep that left arm isolated. Taking his time now, Truman. Just looking at what his options are. Sheridan scrambles. Sheridan does well from that position to get guard, but. As he did, he caught an elbow for his troubles. Truman here, not standing square on. He's aware of the threat of the footlock. He throws the legs and lands a huge shot over the top. Good work by Sheridan to kick Truman away, but Truman relentless in coming forward. Good up kick, catches Truman. It's a very good up kick. Very underutilized weapon, Rob. A lot of fighters land those spectacularly. Truman picks his man up, slams him down on the canvas to try and break the guard, but doesn't do. Sheridan's got that guard locked on. We're we'll looking to push up against the hips. Hasn't fully closed it yet. So the intent's clearly there, Rob, to push on the hips, as we can see. Both guys jostle for position. Sheridan trying to get the heel into the hip of his opponent. Truman. Looking to bring Sheridan up high. The change is tacked and fires a big right hand. And that's a huge shot over the top. Truman waiting for his opponent to get his hands up, and there's that knee. We all saw it coming, Rob. Sheridan almost gingerly bringing that hand up because he thought that a knee was going to come. Truman hoists his opponent up and over, looking for that takedown. Truman driving forward. Sheridan looking to base out, but he's not really being afforded the opportunity as the takedowns are coming in. Truman working relentlessly for the takedown and dumps his opponent again. 
with a huge slam. Watch the appreciation of this audience, a really big takedown. And here's where he'll do his damage, Rob, when he postures up. Sheridan doing a good job of holding on to his opponent, doing a good job of locking on and not taking a lot of punishment. But the second Truman's afforded the opportunity to posture up, the shots really start coming down. And here's the mount. These are, this is bad time to mind Sheridan. As Truman looks out to close the show, and now he's got the back and the body triangle straight away. He really put that body triangle on quickly, Rob, and that's the sign of an experienced grappler as he looks to put the choke in. Doesn't have it quite under the neck, it's on the chin a little bit. But as we've seen, fights can be finished from this position. That's right, Sheridan looking to pull the arms away. Beautiful transition from Truman into the arm. Doesn't quite have it, tries to work for it. Sheridan doing the right thing, stacking up on his opponent. Sheridan trying to shorten the space between Truman and his arm, and he does well to do so. Truman may be looking for the triangle choke, and he's got it. Beautiful transitions. Wow, from a rear naked to an arm bar to a triangle choke in a matter of seconds. There is a this is a very good reason why a lot of people are talking about this man at the moment. That is a tight looking triangle. Sheridan showing an incredible amount of game to still be in there. But Truman rolls him over. It doesn't look like there's a lot of space there. And now he transitions again, looking for the arm bar. He didn't feel the triangle was on. You've got to give Sheridan credit there for lasting the length of that triangle choke. For me, it looks as though it was on, Ben, on more than one occasion. He really toughed it out, but what he is now is he's on top for the end of the round. I mean, it's not like he can win the round realistically unless he lands a huge shot and puts his opponent in a lot of trouble, but it's a good finish to what has been a fantastic first round. Wow, what a great first round for me, though. Truman dominated. Huge takedowns, huge techniques, beautiful transitions. But Sheridan, in all fairness, did a fantastic job to survive. Definitely, I mean, often very underutilized. You see somebody put in a fantastic position like that, that it does indeed take, take two to tango. And Sheridan had to show the toughness, had to show the submission defense, because there were a lot of times in that fight where he could have quite easily got caught. He could quite easily could have tapped, but he stuck it out and he hung in there. But Truman's transitions for me, Rob, I think, were the key. We talk about the higher-end grapplers that we see, and the key we always say is the fact they're always thinking one submission ahead, and that was the perfect illustration in Truman's game. It was a triangle, it was an armbar, it was a rear naked choke. So quick on his hips that he was able to flick his legs over and change the technique and give Sheridan something else to think about. So here we go, round two. Sheridan in the red, Truman. Truman taking a lot of very deep breaths, Rob. Obviously really expended a lot of energy in that round. You ready? Fight! Very tough round. Sheridan just flicking a leg kick out there. Truman for an eye kick, but doesn't seem to have a seem of much kind of snap as he did in the first round. Not hard to understand why though realistically, I mean, that was an all-action first round. Truman comes in again, looking for the takedown, got the single leg. Truman looking to possibly dominate through his wrestling ability again. That caused Sheridan so much trouble in the first round. Beautiful single leg, textbook. Way turned for me, Rob, absolutely fantastic. Could have gone over the top with the kind of single leg carryover like he did in the other round, but chosen instead for the 180 to just spin and dump his man on the canvas there. And to find a man at this stage of his career, I mean, 1-0 as a professional, to have kind of such a selection of takedowns in his arsenal, a really frightening prospect for a lot of other featherweights. There'll be a lot of featherweights keeping their eye on, it, on Dean Truman, and certainly on Martin Sheridan as well, showing a lot of toughness in this fight. So right now, Sheridan looking to bring those legs up higher. Puts the heel into the hip. So Truman possibly looking to push out or push away. Works for the submission, doesn't quite get the arm. Truman, happy to sit upright, possibly looking to drop a big shot. I can see that big shot coming from here, Robert, and that's exactly what he's looking for. But Sheridan able to catch him with a sneaky up kick. 
Oh, and there's a big one going in. A nice right hand there. Sheridan doing well to cover up. Hey, don't move. Don't move. Put that in. Yeah, fight. The mouthpiece just came dislodged there. Good spot by referee Mark Woodard. Very experienced official. As we see, it's Truman. And Truman in danger here almost. Sheridan looking to threaten off his back if he can get his legs across. Maybe he's looking for a triangle choke there. Maybe even Omar Clark for a different angle. No, I think it is a triangle. He seems to have had it. He seems to have it nice and tight. He's like, and he's attacking the arm as well. This is unbelievable. What a turnaround. Beautiful work by Sheridan, but he's unable to keep it locked in tight. And Truman escapes. Wow, what a turnaround in this, the second round of the main event here at Fight UK. Martin Sheridan showing us, Rob, that you can't sleep on his ground game. Threw a beautiful triangle over the top and looked like he had that one locked in for me for a, for a while there as he comes through now. But now here comes the back control again from Truman as he looks to attack the neck once again, riding a little bit high. But he's got both hooks in. He's looking to flatten his man out. He's got to be careful getting booked over the top almost. But both the hooks are now still in. And what an escape from Sheridan. Turn around into his opponent's guard. What an unbelievable back and forth battle this is, Rob. A worthy main event here at Fight UK 5. Sheridan walks away from his opponent, allowing him to come up right. Truman instantly with a body shot and the sweep for takedown. Keeps hold of that single leg and drives, but Sheridan sprawling very well on top. Truman got to be careful of dropping his opponent there, almost a, like a spike, obviously not an intentional one. But Sheridan straight back to his feet again. Coming in with a nice right hand there. And this is very good, he's Beautiful landed a huge knee. shot. Truman really struggling, Sheridan pouring it on. I think Truman showing real signs of fatigue now. Referee having Sheridan a good look at this, the big knees fires. are coming in from Sheridan. What a come from behind victory, this would be a both stand there, training punches. Beautiful knees from Sheridan, again to the body. Both fighters exchange knees, a back and forth second round, this has been. Beautiful sprawl from Sheridan. And are we seeing the tide turning in this battle, Rob? Are we seeing conditioning becoming a factor in? Because Truman looked incredibly fatigued when those shots started coming in. Well, let's be honest, Ben, the most important factor in any fighter's arsenal is conditioning. Definitely. And Sheridan looks over to take the bat now, and now he's got his opponent in a really tough spot. Truman's in a bad way here. He's shipping a lot of punishment. Truman just rolls, covering up. Rolls through, almost tries to get to a better position, but Sheridan sticks on the back. What a second round. So, let's look at this on paper. We have Truman possibly taking the first, Sheridan possibly taking the second, and all to fight for in the third. I mean, how many times have we said it, Rob, the conditioning being such a central factor Truman really came out aggressively in that first round, but try as he might, he couldn't put his opponent away. Sheridan weathered that early storm, but then in the second round, I think the bit that turned it for me, Rob, was the fact that Sheridan nearly locked that triangle on, and that served notice of his intentions. But with just about a minute left right in front of us, Sheridan landed a huge knee from the clinch, smelled blood in the water, and poured on the aggression. Beautiful work from Sheridan. It's gonna be a very, very interesting third round. Sheridan upright, bouncing on his toes, showing he's still got the energy and the gas in the tank to go. Dean Truman really, really looking fatigued. Sheridan looking like he's ready for this. You ready? You ready? Let's fight! So here we go, third and final round in this, the main event of the evening here at Fight UK 5, I'm Rob Nutley, with me has been Ben Cartledge, taking you through some of the hottest action in the UK. And Martin Sheridan in the red shorts against Dean Truman in the Union Jack shorts, and there's that clinch again, a jumping knee. Beautiful, the plum clinch, he just throws Truman to one side. Sheridan really coming through now. 
after such a difficult first round. And a leg kick coming in from Sheridan. Truman started very aggressively but wasn't able to, to kind of take his man out, but he's coming forward and that was some good strikes. Can't stay out of that clinch position, Rob. That's right, Truman will look to dominate, look to take a leg. And as I said that, he sunk down for the single. He knows what he needs to do, but he can't let his opponent land any of those big knees. Those have been kind of the difference maker in this fight. And there's a huge pickup. Again from behind, a huge slam. Truman's got a hold of the neck, but he didn't seem to be able to do anything with it. It's just kind of a, a real battle of wills here in this third round. Truman on top, Sheridan underneath, looking to free the hands if he can, looking to get forward. Truman doing the right thing and bullying his opponent to the ground. Sheridan able to escape though, looks to stand upright and almost takes the back of his opponent, Truman now. Sheridan coming out the back door, good he lands shots. some good shots. Truman's just sitting there, he can't take this kind of punishment. Referee Mark, Mark. having a very good look at the action. Hands down almost, and there's a big knee coming in over the top. Truman looks to turn round. He can't, but this is a very bad spot for him. Sheridan's got that hand free. He looks to lock in almost a rear naked choke from there if he can, if he can free his other hand. What a finish this would be. He's only he got it off the top. Wow. What a main event. What a huge turnaround. Here at Fight UK, absolutely amazing. Unbelievable. What a main event. What heart shown by Martin Sheridan to come through. At two minutes and six seconds of round three, your winner to, to tap out by rear naked choke from the blue corner, Martin the Silence of Sheridan. Here we are at Fire UK5, Martin Sheridan just coming out of the cage after a phenomenal back and forth fight with Dean Truman and Martin. That's got to be, and, I, and I've commentated a lot of fights, that has one of been got to be one of the best fights I have ever commentated in my entire life. Unbelievable battle, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, it was, it was a wicked fight, man. Best fight I've ever had, toughest fight I've ever had, easily. Really strong guy, really strong. But uh, I stuck in, I'm quite fit. I dig deep, I can take a licking and keep on ticking. That's what I did. That's fantastic. I mean, did you feel him? Obviously, in the first round, he looked tremendously strong. I mean, did you feel him slowing down in the second and the yeah, third? Yeah. I mean, you nearly caught that triangle choke yourself in the third, in the second round, and then he slowed down. Yeah, I think it was the knees in the second round. I, I felt him after that. I knew he, he was gone. It was just a matter of time, really. So this has been Fight UK, and Ben, that last fight, absolutely phenomenal. It just goes to show how much heart fighters need. It's never over till it's over, Rob. I mean, Martin Sheridan took some massive punishment in that in that first round, and in the second he came back through a phenomenal come from behind victory in a fight worthy of a main event on any card. Huge shot from Foster. That was there, the huge, there's that big left, and here come the punches. And Foster looks to finish this fight.